Dr. Anushree Bhatkar. Dr. Prasanna is going to present last. Okay. Uh, Anushree is going to talk on... Is she there? Okay. Understanding vitamin D receptors and its impact on ocular surface disease. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'll start with my talk. Uh, we, there are there are a myriad of uh, treatment options that are available for dry eye disease and uh, cross-linking remains the gold standard for keratoconus uh, treatment and stabilization. But still there are some patients who do not respond to the treatment and some uh, do respond to the treatment. So this necessitated the need to look beyond the existing treatment strategies. So this is the work that our team has done to understand the, uh, the importance of vitamin D uh, and the ocular surface and we have established that vitamin D deficiency is associated with ocular surface inflammation. In this current uh, publication, we have summarized the uh, role of vitamin D in the eye. So it helps in dampening the inflammation and improved immunomodulation. It acts as a it improves the corneal epithelial barrier function. It enhances wound healing and reduces pain and nociception. So the prevalence of vitamin D in India is noted to be more than 70%. But still, uh, why do all vitamin D deficient patients do not develop dry eye disease or keratoconus? So for any disease to manifest, uh, there are three factors that should come into play. One is the etiopathological factors of the disease, the genetic background and the host response. So vitamin D basically affects the host response. That is how the cell is going to respond in a stress situation. So if the patient is only vitamin D deficient and the other factors are not uh, strongly present, then the patient will likely develop a subclinical form of the disease. On the other hand, uh, despite having a normal vitamin D level, some patients still uh, develop uh, dry eye disease or keratoconus. So this is important that beneficial effects of vitamin D are carried out when the vitamin D binds to the vitamin D receptor. And pres that is why presence of adequate amount of vitamin D receptors is of paramount importance. So uh, can, uh, we can say that uh, vitamin D receptors, if they are reduced in number in the ocular surface, uh, that, uh, that they would provide inadequate number of binding sites for the vitamin D, which could hamper its function. This brings us to our research question that can vitamin D receptor be the key in dry eye disease pathophysiology. Uh, so we uh, saw how the ocular surface uh, cells are affected at the molecular level in dry eye disease. We took conjunctival epithelial cells uh, using impression cytology from normal patients and from uh, normals and from dry eye disease patients. We uh, did a quantitative PCR to look at the inflammatory markers and uh, we uh, did an immunofluorescence to measure the Tony BP and vitamin D receptor expression. So Tony BP is nothing but an osmolarity biomarker. Basically, it represents the osmolarity of the ocular surface. And we know from the definition of dry eye given by TFOS due to that uh, hyperosmolarity plays an important uh, etiological role in dry eye. So the what we saw was uh, that in the dry eye disease patients, uh, there was increased expression of Tony BP and uh, there was a decreased expression of vitamin D receptors in the uh, epithelial cells. So we could say that the hyperosmotic environment was degrading the vitamin D receptors. The second question was how does vitamin D receptor play a role in keratoconus? Uh, so we collected epithelium from 30 keratoconus patients and from 10 uh, normal controls undergoing uh, PRK and we collected the epithelium from the cone and the periphery. We uh, stored it at minus 80 degrees in our bio repository and then we did a western blot to look at the protein expression and a quantitative PCR to look at the gene expression. Uh, we observed that uh, the vitamin D receptor expression was lower in the cone area as compared to the periphery in the keratoconus epithelium and the vitamin D receptor expression was lower in higher grades of KC. We know that uh, LOX or lysyl oxidase enzyme is an endogenous crosslinker and the expression is reduced in kera uh, keratoconus patients. So we induced keratoconus uh, uh, by creating an oxidative stress in uh, ep cultured epithelial cells and again we observed that there were low levels of vitamin D uh, receptors in these patients and uh, significantly low levels of LOX and increased expression of MMP9. We treated these epithelial cells with uh, vitamin D and uh, we observed uh, that uh, there was an increase in the LOX expression, increase in the, VDR, uh, uh, the vitamin D receptor expression and reduce uh, reduction in the MMP9 expression. Uh, in a recent publication, we have published our treatment algorithm that we follow in, less, in severe deficiency that is less than 10 nanogram per, per ml. We give an uh, intramuscular injection followed by oral treatment and in moderate in uh, deficiency and insufficiency, we give an oral uh, supplementation. So we studied the effect of this vitamin D treatment on the ocular surface. So we collected epithe uh, epithelial cells from keratoconus patients who were vitamin D deficient using impression cytology. And we looked at the gene expression again of LOX, COL1A1 and COL4A1 uh, before and after systemic vitamin D supplementation as per our algorithm.
So we observed that uh, the systemic vitamin D treatment enhances the expression of LOX and COL1A1 and COL4A1 and this could uh, improve the structural integri integrity of the cornea. So this is some recent work that we did and it could be the way forward. So we uh, in dry eye disease patients, so uh, we looked, uh, we induced hyperosmotic stress in cultured epithelial cells and we treated it with genistein and calcitriol. And again, we looked at the Tony BP and the vitamin D receptor expression using Western blotting. So genistein is nothing but an CFTR activator. So it basically regulates the chloride or transport inside the cells. So uh, it helps to improve the cell stability and it uh, uh, keeps a good ocular surface milieu basically. So what we saw was genistin and calcitriol blocked the hyperosmotic stress induced VDR or vitamin D receptor degradation that we saw and it improved the survival of vitamin D receptors in the epithelial cells in this in vitro study. So to summarize what was known is that vitamin D is a natural endogenous anti-inflammatory regulator and vitamin D deficiency is associated with ocular surface inflammation and it may affect the surgical outcomes. What our study added was that the vitamin D treatment itself induces vitamin D receptor expression on the ocular surface. Uh, the vitamin D and vitamin D receptors are reduced in dry eye disease and keratoconus patients. The hyperosmotic stress uh, in uh, ocular surface inflammation degrades the vitamin D receptors and genistein and calcitriol may rescue this degradation. Vitamin D supplementation also increases the LOX and collagen and it could stabilize KC. Thank Please you. Oh, you're done. Oh. Good study. Thank you. Is there any direct relation with keratoconus, vitamin D deficiency? Uh, so sir, it, uh, we have seen that it causes ocular surface inflammation. So that is why there is a raised MMP9 in the ocular surface, which could cause an extracellular matrix degradation and then which has a role in keratoconus. Maybe in routine practice, see the vitamin D deficiency. So we do uh, look at vitamin D and we uh, supplement them according to the treatment protocol. So that is what we follow. This morning I heard a paper either from your institute or from Arvind. Mm -hmm where the raised IgE was more responsible or more correlated to development of keratoconus yes, than sir, vitamin no. D deficiency. So if this is in addition to the existing factors so that we are not saying that the routine treatment should be given, but apart from that, a vitamin D supplementation would help. Thank you.